Hey, this is Parker Wright coming to you from the simulation team. And in this episode of Simulation in Action, we'll talk about how to properly set up a valve out of Fusion and also how to properly set up mesh adaptation for an internal liquid flow analysis. All right, so first the problem description. So we'll demonstrate how to set up an internal fluid flow analysis and leverage mesh adaptation to improve the accuracy of your solution. The key learning objectives are creating an internal fluid volume infusion, assigning flow boundary conditions, assigning materials, and proper mesh adaptation settings. All right, so let's take a look at a video to see how this works. So here's our valve assembly. We're actually in fusion, and you can see there's the simulation CFD CAD connection. We're actually going to automatically create the fluid volume. So you can see we're selecting the fluid volume pick, and then we get to choose between external and internal fluid volume creation. So we're going to choose internal, and then we'll just simply draw a box around all of the solids. Fusion will automatically detect the internal fluid flow faces and create a fluid volume within those. So really cool technology that allows us again to automatically uh, create that flow domain, whether it's air, water, blood, peanut butter, whatever the liquid is. Okay, so now we, we hide the outer shell and we can actually zoom in and see that interior fluid volume. There we go, set and ready to go. And you can launch with just the fluid if you want, or you can keep the uh, external components on just for the, uh, more for the post-processing or for showing the results more effectively. So we'll go ahead and turn that back on, um, no big deal, and, and go ahead and send this into simulation CFD. So really neat technology there. Uh, big thanks to Kevin Schneider and our, our Fusion team. Uh, the guys are out on the, on the cutting edge of, uh, of this, this modeling functionality. So really, uh, really excited about that automating the process for you. And now we see the model in simulation CFD and we're actually looking at a, a symmetrical version of it. So we just cut it in half and we can see the, the interior fluid volume is set to be water, right? So it's, it's uh, blue, we can float over top of it and, uh, and get the reminder as to exactly what that is. We'll just hit edit on the material dialog and we can see, okay, we've set that as water. We set the outer parts as steel. The valve assembly might be a different material. We're ready to go with the materials. After that's the boundary condition. So again, floating over the end, we can see the flow rate and the temperature. If, uh, if relevant, we, we set a zero pressure on the outlet side. Uh, that's just a gauge pressure. And, uh, and we're ready to go with some slip conditions in the middle. And then lastly here, let's take a look at the mesh, right? So within simulation CFD, we have an automatic measure um, which looks at edge length and curvature. We also have been asked for uh, history for the measure. So in the tree now, you can see if you've done surface refinement, gap refinement, and you can see if you've changed the length scale. Uh, point one is the default here. So again, we've added the history functionality based on the request uh, from our clients to the meshing dialog so that you can see what steps have already been performed and make it more easy to repeat those. We also now have fully integrated the wiki help system into simulation CFD. So this is managed by uh, Lynn Whitehead, one of, the, one of the guys on our team. Uh, phenomenal content within this, this wiki help database. So I encourage you, if you're working on a, a specific type of analysis and you want to know more, just hit the wiki help and you can go in there. A lot of, there's a lot of good content and a lot of really good videos, uh, very visual, um, simple ways to watch and understand how to set these problems up. All right, so now let's talk about mesh adaptation. So we go in the solve dialog and we bring up the adaptation dialog. So we turned it on. Cycles to run is how many different adaptations will you do. Save cycles, we turn those on because we want to see the results of the different mesh adaptations. Now here are some of the settings. Flow angularity captures uh, the flow and recirculation zones and uh, changing velocity profiles, very important. And then we see down here growth rate, boundary layer, refinement limit. Those are some of the more advanced meshing controls. And as with uh, most of simulation CFD, the defaults are valid and good for about 90% of what our clients do. So let me slide over here so we can see this a little better. These are the results now. So on the left side, that's the final mesh adaptation run. On the lower right, that's the initial. On the upper right is kind of the intermediate. So you can see how much finer the mesh is through the zone where the, the fluid is, uh, you know, contracts and then expands, right? And that's really important for accuracy and fidelity of results. And what happens is the adaptation um, automatically adjusts your mesh so that you can better capture those flow physics, especially in the areas where uh, of the highest gradient. So. Um, Again, really, really neat technology. Uh, hats off to, uh, to Lee Kenya as well and our meshing team who was instrumental in developing this. Uh, this will help you get better solutions 
much faster. Again, a lot of automation um, under the hood of simulation CFD. So really exciting stuff. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to give me a uh, drop me a line, parker.wright at autodesk.com. Thanks for your time.